This week's Parsha begins with the words, Miketz Shnatayim, at the end of two years. Joseph has been languishing in jail during this time, and he is about to gain not only his freedom, but a whole new lease on life. He will become the viceroy of Egypt and be restored to his family. The events initiate a new regime about to unfold in the world, and this Parsha always coincides with the celebration of Hanukkah, the darkest time of the year. The Haftarah portion, which is a corresponding reading, comes from what is called the Prophets in Jewish Understanding. This grouping includes the books of Joshua, Samuel, and Kings, in addition to all the regular prophets, except Daniel. That's a lesson for another time. This week we are reading from 1 Kings chapter 3, starting in verse 15. It is the beginning of Solomon's reign, and he has just made his prayer to Jehovah for wisdom. Jehovah appeared to Solomon in a dream, and the reading opens with Vayikatz Shlomo, and Solomon woke, and behold, it was a dream. Note how the verb Vayikatz, to wake up, sounds like Miketz at the end of, which is the opening of the Genesis portion. That is because both words come from the idea of cutting off or making an end of something. The king's portion goes on to relate the famous story of Solomon's decision concerning the two women, both of whom had given birth, but one of whose babies had died in the night. One of the themes that ties the king's reading to the Genesis reading is the great wisdom of these two men. Joseph, by his foresight, saves the world. In fact, his Egyptian name, Zafnat Panea, is sometimes translated as Savior of the World. Solomon saves only one life, but it is written in the Talmud in Sanhedrin 37a that he who saves even one life, it is as if he has saved the entire world. Again, we are at the beginning of a new regime. The revolt and victory, which is celebrated by the holiday of Hanukkah, was begun in 167 BCE when the Seleucid Empire was not only in possession of the Holy Temple, but was enforcing statutes preventing the Jewish people from practicing the laws of Torah. Sabbath, circumcision, and eating kosher were prohibited. In every town were emissaries requiring the people to sacrifice pigs and eat them in worship to false gods. The true nature of this oppression is revealed in the books of First and Second Maccabees, two books which are included in the biblical canons of the Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and some other denominations. In fact, they appeared in the original King James Bible, but were removed in 1885. After the Maccabean Revolt, the state achieved independence for a limited amount of time. Judah, the general who had led the insurgency, was killed in a later battle. His brothers, Jonathan and Simon, continued to fight until the independence was won. In 142 BCE, Simon became the first prince of the Hasmonean dynasty, which lasted until 63 BCE, when the kingdom was invaded by Rome. It is interesting that this independent state lasted either 77 or 79 years, depending on how the beginning is reckoned. Right now, the modern state of Israel is 73 years old. This similarity is on the minds of some Israelis. The apparent cause for the downfall of the Hasmonean dynasty in the first century BCE was fighting between the people to the point of civil war. When you look at Israel today, you see that there has been turmoil and disagreement among the people. They have had four elections in the past two years, and the coalition government continues to hang by a thread. The Knesset is split almost directly in half. We know that Yeshua himself was in the temple at the time of Hanukkah, called the Feast of Dedication in John chapter 10. The word Hanukkah means dedication, and the people were celebrating the victory of the Maccabees at that season some 200 years earlier. You can see it mentions that it was winter in the John account. The Maccabees had fought against the Greeks. In Yeshua's time, the land was ruled by the Romans, and the people were looking for a new liberator. There was much talk of this Yeshua of Nazareth. Some said he was the Messiah. Would it be he who would free them as the Maccabees had done in the past? In John 10:24, we read, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, 
How long do you make us to doubt? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. The full rationale for his apparent lack of political action comes in John 18:36, while he is talking to Pilate. Yeshua answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Aside from this connection, there is another interesting tie between Hanukkah and Yeshua. From both books of First and Second Maccabees and from Josephus, we learn that the first real battle between the rebels and the Greeks was at Emmaus. Previously, the rebels had been conducting small guerrilla raids and needling the invading troops. But at Emmaus, Judah Maccabee attacked the base camp of the Seleucids and beat them. It was the beginning of victory for the rebel forces. We know from the book of Luke that Emmaus was the first site where Yeshua revealed himself after the resurrection. Up to that point, the disciples had seen only the empty tomb. Cleopas and another member of the community were on a seven or eight mile walk to this village when a stranger joined them. It notes that their eyes were shielded from recognizing the Lord, who explained to them all the prophecy related to the events of the past several years, and specifically the past few days. As they arrive at the village, they ask Yeshua to come eat with them. From Luke 24, 30-31 And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed. Remember, there is no it in the original manuscript. We bless the Father, not the bread. He took bread and blessed and broke and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Just as the Maccabees inaugurated a new era for the Israelites with their resounding defeat of the enemy at Emmaus, so Yeshua inaugurated a new era for all people as he revealed himself in the resurrection and made plain the scriptures which prophesied of that event. His death, burial, and resurrection mark a new era for all mankind, not an era of political rule, but an era of Yehovah's rule on earth. One P.S. on the Maccabees. The Maccabees were from the Levite tribe. They were living away from Jerusalem because of the corruption in the temple. Their rebellion freed the temple from the pollution of idols and false worship, and they were able to ritually cleanse the area and begin the requirements for worship again, as prescribed by the Torah. For those people in that day, this was their connection to Jehovah. You can read in the books of Maccabees that the first thing they did was to celebrate Sukkot, the Feast of Booths, which they had missed just 70 days earlier. This was the real reason for the celebration of eight days. Reportedly, those sanctifying the temple took the polluted altar apart stone by stone because of its defilement, and then they built a new one. It is said that they did not know what to do with those stones, which had once been holy, but were now impure. They decided to leave them there and wait for the Messiah to come and explain what the correct procedure should be. What do we learn in John 10.31? After Yeshua does not give them a satisfactory answer about whether he is the Messiah, we read, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. All that the Maccabees had done up to that point appears good and in order. But then they appointed one of their own as king. This is not according to Torah. According to Torah, the kings must come from the line of David, the tribe of Judah. Therefore, their independent political kingdom was bound to fail, as is every other man-made political kingdom. The only true peace and independence is found under the rule of the one true king of the earth, Yeshua the Messiah, and complete dependence on him. As we consider Miketz Shnatayim at the end of two years, or in a spiritual interpretation, 2,000 years, we anticipate his soon return to rule and reign. We return to his exchange with Pilate in John 18:37. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king? Yeshua answered, You say that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Every one that is of the truth hears my voice. Close every door to me. Those I love from you.